One more sleep. Yes, sir, Ed. If you're ready, then I'm ready. Oh, fuck. I'm already dropping my beer everywhere. Let's do this. Rear Naked Takes. Ed, Gonzo, we back up in this bitch. Shout out to Rick the Ruler. Anymore. Shout, out to, shout out to Rick the Ruler. Fuck El Vato Chris. Um, you know, we out here sipping. You know, I got the Mexican flag on my head, and I got to drink some authentic Mexican beer. Not really, because it's all I had. Dealing for my dad, and he's a straight up Mexican. That's just probably disgusting. It's because Ed, this is what this is what real Mexican men drink right here. Fuck no. So weird ass motherfuckers drink. You're a weird ass motherfucker. <clears throat> you're drinking Corona. Is it because you're about the family, Ed? Is it because you're about the fam? Because I wear the crown. Oh, that's that was a good one. Where where's the belt anyways? I was gonna ask for it. <clears throat> Cause I wear the crown, baby. There you go. Champ shit only. Hey, how this yeah, is so- this is your uh like in all honesty, this is uh your second your second or third time defending it. So you won it. When did you get it for me? Way back when. Because I think you defended it for the first time with Yuri, and then you did it again with Izzy, and now we got this one. So, fuck, well, that's interesting. But yeah, guys, we are back. We are chilling. We are vibing. Ed is in the building right now. You can see his posters from uh, both events that he's atten- that he attended in I person. I went back in May. Yeah, so that was, that was the one right before. Fuck, uh, look at you. The was longest. Charles? Yeah, the longest streak. Undefeated streak? I don't even know. Yeah, I think I think the most either of us ha- has like defended has been twice. And you're going for your third one. Congratulations. I don't count wins. I just count checks. Yeah, but uh, RNT ain't paying us for shit. But anyways, I was gonna talk about your little poster um on your right side, Ed. Right behind you. Uh 269. 269. You know what? Let's talk about 269. We clearly have arguably one of the biggest rematches and one of the most important rematches in, um, for sure, in, in female MMA history. And, you know, it's probably up there with uh, MMA history in general. But you, sir, you saw that shit live. And I know we talked about it before, but I think we should remind the fans and talk about um, what it was like and your experiences and just seeing like a fucking piece of MMA history because nobody ever thought Juliana Pena was going to beat Amanda Nunez and she did at UFC 269 and you saw that Ed let us know what you think <clears throat> yeah i mean uh, UFC 269 was fucking nuts um that was the, the first fight i ever attended uh i mean just the fucking it was electric bro like the atmosphere but uh, once that second round was going and Pena started tagging uh, Nunez, I was losing my breath. I, everybody was just yelling. All you hear was, oh, oh, oh. Like, people couldn't believe what the fuck was going on. Motherfuckers had probably, like, plus 10,000 tickets on Pena. So it was fucking insane. Um, I thought I was going to fucking pass out for how much I was fucking yelling. I had no idea what was going on. I didn't know it was going to go down like that, so... Yeah, honestly, I, I had fucking goosebumps. That was probably one of the loudest moments uh, I've ever been inside an arena. Um, and especially when they said and new, like, it was just crazy. And I don't know if it was because Pena had so many fans. I think it was just more so the fact that, one, people had, a lot of people probably bet her. Uh, and two, I mean, it's Vegas. Uh, and two, fucking, it was just a crazy-ass upset. Like, everybody was just in awe, shock and awe of what happened. So, fucking nuts. Um, I wish I could relive, relive that experience. That show's insane. Especially the main event, too, but obviously um, we're not going to get into that. Yeah, yeah. and to your credit, you've been pretty hyped for this card in general. I was, like, kind of iffy on it. I'm like, whatever, but I think it's starting to build up on me now. Um, the fight card isn't that terrible. We're definitely, we're definitely going to have some good fights. Um, I feel like to the casual, though, they're not too interested. But... Um, Ed, as you know, on my personal Instagram pages, I like to have little polls. 
and things like that. And I actually, whenever I was going through who was voting for what and all that stuff, I did see that there was a lot more female participants for the main event, which is good. You know what I mean? I, I feel like um, obviously like female sports in general, they don't get a whole lot of buzz. Um, I think the only times that I could really recount female sports being very gravitating is uh, whenever Ronda uh, Rousey was in the game, especially now um, uh, Molly Meatball McCann. And well, I mean, you don't see this quite often. Ed, when was the last time we had a main event between two female fighters? I want to say it was Ronda Rousey. Probably Rousey Misha Tay is the last one I remember. Yeah, Maybe it was a Pena one, too. It probably could have been a Pena. Pena Rousey, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, not Pena, Nunez. Um, it could have been Nunez, but not as far as I remember. But yeah. I remember Ronda Rousey did headline some events. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and like, like I'm saying, dude, it's, I think it's it's pretty cool to see that. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of people, like, they don't really acknowledge it. But just in general, I think it's cool. Not only that, but, Ed, did you watch the, the weigh-ins uh, earlier today? Yeah, I watched the weigh-ins and the, the press conference. And I'm saying, like, I'm feeling really, really good energy for this card, especially the main event. Um, just being at that fight, seeing how it went down was insane. Like, you can say whatever you want about Amanda, but Pena came in, fucking took the fight to her, and she has swag to her now, right? She has fucking confidence. And you can see it everywhere she fucking goes. Talk shows, um, the weigh-ins, the press conference, every time. Like, she, she carries that swagger with her. And obviously, Amanda's Amanda. <laughs> They're both champions now. Amanda's a 145-er. Pena's a 135-er. Uh, you know, to Amanda's credit, she she was a double champ. To Pena's credit, nobody really competes for the 145 division anymore. Um, but, like, just, it, it, it's crazy. Just, like, how how much there is at stake, especially for Amanda. Uh, even though Amanda already has like a Hall of Fame resume, she's done everything. She's one of the greatest. She probably is the greatest female fighter of all time. I would say she is. Um, so the fact that Pena beat her and knocked her off and now Pena, you know, created this aura around her, it's what built up this fight. Like it's what allowed it to be a main event. It wasn't just Amanda being who she was. It was the fact that Pena beat her and now Pena is like, acting the part as a champion yeah. and the fact that she's doing that it's it's creating an atmosphere for this fight and that's why i do not mind that it's a main event i think it's gonna be fucking nuts i'm hyped um honestly I, i'm really excited for this one yeah i i mean i mean uh, you have you all due respect you know what i mean you definitely have reason to because not only did you see the pena nunez fight live but you also got to see Brandon Moreno live, despite the fact that you were going for um, Davidson. You still have that connection with Brandon Moreno, so I think that's pretty dope. Um, so yeah, uh, shout out forty nine Danny. Where is the proper twelve? Take a shot. If my bottle was cold, I would take one right now. But it is take a not. warm shot, pussy. Fuck that. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Maybe by the end, if you stick around and if you remind me at the end, I'll do it. But that's if you're there and you got to give me the shout out. Um, so at, at earlier, you said um, both of these females had a lot at stake. Speaking of stakes, do you think Drake is going to drop anything on this fight? I think Drake's putting Amelia and Amanda. I don't know if he's going to bet Moreno Kai. He might go for Kai just because Kai's uh, rocks with Izzy at um, City Kickboxing. So he might go Kai, but I think he for sure drops money on Amanda. Um, that's my hot take for yeah. Drake Stakes. Drake Stakes. We got a new segment. Rear Naked Stakes. Drake Stakes. Rear Naked Drake Stakes. I like that. Um, well, Ed, do you have anything um, on the news section or on the news side that you'd like to talk about? I would say... Um, if you're keeping up with our page, we got a few things going on. Uh, so most recently, the reporter Marcel Dorf announced Mahmoud Morada um, versus Chao Borrelio in UFC 280. Chao Borrelio is just coming off a win. Uh, most recently, he's the the Brazilian fighter who just came into the UFC and he's causing a little bit of a stir. He's doing pretty well. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, so far the US, the card for UFC 280 is looking just insane. Um, we're going to have a lot to talk about for that later on. As far as other fight news, Edson Barbosa, he's going to fight um, Ilya Taporia. And this one to me is it's crazy because I know they're they're fucking they're fighters, they're strikers. That's what they're gonna do. I mean, we saw Giga against Edson, they were just going at it. We saw Edson against Burgos, they're just going at it. Um Edson against Bryce Mitchell, he really couldn't get in that element. But I think Ilya Taporia is the perfect guy to put with Edson Barbosa just because it's gonna create a great fight. Ilya, you know, he has that, you know, power. Um, he has that chin. We seen him against Jai Herbert, he took some shots, he came back. But, I mean, Edson Barbosa, uh, I mean, never count him out. Obviously, we said that last time against Bryce Mitchell, but he's not, you know, I don't think he's going to have to worry about that this time, you know. I don't think Ilya's even going to shoot a takedown. Um, so, it, it's a better position for him. It might be like, you know, I don't like that gatekeeper term. It might be what the UFC's trying to do, especially to just bump up Ilya in the rankings, <laughs> which makes sense because he is a good fighter. He's undefeated, I think, at 11-0. and but. um that's going to be a banger. So keep a lookout out for that one. Ilya Tapori against Edson Barbosa, the, the veteran. Yeah. Uh, and then lastly. Yeah, uh, have... um, I, I just wanted to have a quick word on that one. Ed, I know you don't, you don't like the term gatekeeper, especially with someone with the resume of Edson Barbosa and the veteran style that he carries. Um, but... I hate to say it, dude, but I, the way that the UFC frames him, in my books, he's definitely a gatekeeper, which is not a bad term. I feel like a lot of people look at a gatekeeper and they think, oh, like a wash fighter, oh, this, like they don't have it in them. You know, they're at the bottom of the of the rankings, whatever. I don't think about it that way. I literally think that amongst the 1% of the 1%, there's fucking you know obviously unfortunately the lowest fighter there's always going to be you know the, the bottom but the fact that you're still amongst the fucking elite and you're basically getting tested with the fresh blood and all that stuff i feel like that's um there's a lot to be said about that i guess you can say maybe this is somewhat of a hot take but i, I don't necessarily look at these uh quote-unquote gatekeep or gatekeepers as like a bad thing you know what i mean I think it's a it's it's a privilege to be anywhere inside of the top five or inside of the top ten, you know what I mean? Even if you're at the at the bottom, like fucking kudos to you. So that I mean that's my take on it. But go ahead. I mean yeah, <laughs> uh, like I said, you could say that they kind of did it with Giga Chikadze. You know they put up Giga. He's on a hot streak and he just extended with that. And but remember Shane Burgos right now is on a couple fight win streak. The last person he lost to was to Edson Barbosa, and Edson finished him. It was one of those weird KOs. It was like, uh, like they called it the five second knockout because he punched him. I think like in the t around the temple, and then he just kind of stumbled and, and fell back, and they called it. It was a knockout, but he did knock him out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Edson's one of those guys that he. I'm not going to say he's one dimensional, but, you know, we kind of know what he brings. He brings electric striking. You know, he has those signature hook kicks, um, speed, uh, leg kicks, the body shots, everything. Right. He probably won't give you as much on the ground and the jujitsu, um, at least anymore. So, he, like I said, he's just one of those guys like maybe like a Stephen Thompson where he just belongs in stand up. He belongs in a fight where he needs to put on a show. He's probably not going to fight with the elite. But still, I think he could make some noise um, and still potentially, I think, be on a pay-per-view. Regardless, it doesn't have to be a main, obviously not a main event, maybe an opener. Uh, but I think he's still at that caliber. and I think we might see it with Ilya. He'll probably get him in trouble a couple times because we've seen Ilya take shots. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know. It's gonna definitely, then, definitely going to be a good fight. <laughs> Yeah, and then lastly, um, they announced a couple of days ago, Hakeem DeWudo and Julian Arosa, they're going to fight on September 10th. That's going to be at UFC 279. Uh, Hakeem DeWudo and both him and Julian Arosa, they're both 4-1 and one, uh, in their last five fights. So both of them are pretty much on a hot streak. Um, that's going to be a pretty good one too, so keep an eye out for that one. Um. Yeah, Ed, I mean, if you have any other news, 
go ahead and throw it out there. I'm, I came pretty dry. I mean, it's definitely hard to find um um news in in two days. I mean, the last time we streamed was two days ago for the post show. I don't even think I fucking uploaded that yet. I gotta fucking get all my shit. But on breaking news. This video is not sponsored by Tecate, but I'm drinking it anyways because this is real Mexican beer and fuck what Ed's drinking. Ed, show him the, the bitch beers that you're drinking. Corona. Is that where the crown, bitch? So if you like Corona, fuck you. If you drink real, authentic Mexican beer, kudos to you. Hit me up. Give you a shout out. This video is not sponsored by either company. Um... All right, Ed, so there was one, uh, another little piece that I wanted to, um, to show. It's, I guess it's my news. <clears throat> the fuck was that? Sneeze, Chris, shut the fuck up, please. <laughs> Do us a favor. Tell him, tell him, Avato, tell him. Um, Boo. So there, there was, uh, something that I thought was pretty cool. You know what I mean? I, I feel like. It has it, it has a very deeper meaning than what it looks like, and I'm sure this picture will probably live on forever in the MMA community. Uh, Ariel Hawani uh, got a really nice picture of it, and I just wanted to show it. But today on the on the weigh-ins, on the weigh-ins on the on the well, yeah, the weigh-ins and then the face-off and shit. Whenever Juliana Pena went to face off Amanda Nunez for the last time, Juliana Pena brought a little friend which uh, it was her daughter. And I just wanted to show it real quick because I thought it was pretty cool how, like, Juliana's, like, nothing but business. And then um, Amanda Nunez is obviously nothing but business, too. But you see mini Juliana in the, in the back over there ready to fucking throw it down with Amanda as well. So I think, I think this image is pretty... It's very early on, but I think this, this could be a very iconic image. Probably even... Um, I would even compare it to whenever Muhammad Ali was standing over, I forgot what fighter, and basically like telling him and yelling to get, uh, yelling at him to get up. You know, I feel like this picture can age very well. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that. Ed, do you have any thoughts about um all this right here? Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, if she ever becomes a fighter, you know, Sports Center is gonna bring that shit up five times a year. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I respect it. Yeah, um, they're probably going to dig it up just like they always dig those videos up of Steph Curry and shit whenever he would play basketball as like a baby. So, yep. yeah, it's, it, it's a cool little a cool little picture that I just wanted to show. Um, yeah, Ed, do you got anything else? If not, we just uh, jump straight into this fucking card. Get it. All righty then. All right, guys, as you guys know, it's, uh, it's not new, but uh, tomorrow is UFC 277. And it's going to show at normal times. If you're in the Pacific. Thank God. Yeah, if you're on the Pacific side, the early prelims will start at 3 p.m. on UFC Fight I wouldn't Pass. mind being on the East Coast and watching this shit at 12 a.m. I would. Fuck that. You know what? Let That'd me talk fun. about that. Let, let me talk about it's that. It's Saturday. That'd be fun. Yeah. Okay. 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 You say, you say this is okay. Yeah. On a Saturday. Yes. You're right. A hundred percent for sure. But it does, it does eliminate the fact that you can't go out after. But I, this is kind of random, but this is just uh, me being a fan. But yesterday, I actually had access to the private concert of um, Bad Bunny. Apparently, it was only streamed over in Puerto Rico. And uh, shout out to my plugs because they hooked it up. This motherfucker started. I heard it was on Twitch. Well, wherever wherever you found it. I had a, I had a different plug. Shout out to him. Anyways, this the concert, I think. In Pacific time started at 10. So that equates to... Or no, it started at 8. 8, I want to say. Yeah, it started at 8. And that equates to about 11 p.m. In Puerto Rican time. Because they're, th they're three hours away. They're New York time and shit like that. But anyways, fucking Bad Bunny performed literally for three hours. Brought out like six or seven people. And dude, by the... Uh, maybe 60% or even 70% way um, done with the concert. And I was already fucking done. I didn't want to listen to this shit anymore. I kind of got tired of it. But that motherfucker just kept going strong. And he had to, you know... I mean, he obviously had to put on for his hometown. But I guess what I'm trying to get at here is... The concert ended around like 11, I think. Or 11.30 here at Pacific time. Dude, I was fucking tired. I didn't even want to stay up anymore. Like, I was just annoyed. Um, so It's completely different than that. I mean, it just depends. 
I mean, I, I mean, I, I love. I'm a fan it's of a music. Thursday. Yes. Oh, yes. Two, I can agree with that. It's a concert. <clears throat> and three, I can literally watch a UFC event from like 2 p.m. to literally 10. That's true. So. I guess. I guess it. it could I don't be think you get tired of, of watching it. I mean, come on. It has its similarities, but I could definitely 12 see where the differences are. Faded. Watching a fight. That's ain't nothing better than that. That's true. You know what, Ed? I don't usually agree with you often, but I'll agree with you on that one. But yeah, I'm gonna I... fly. You know what? I'm gonna fly to New York just so I can watch a UFC event on pay per view at 12 a.m. You hear that? I'll let you uh, know how that goes. You hear that, Ariel Hawani and our the the boy GC. Coming for your ass. Ed's going to come over there. Rear naked okay, take. Let's go to MSG. <clears throat> there you go. Shut that shit down. In November. Um. Anyways, all right. Let's 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 get right into uh, these picks. Ed, is there any early prelims that you would like to talk about? Actually, is. <sighs> oh, I got to re-up. Uh, just, let me get that out of my system. Another Tecate for that ass. None of that Tecate light shit. This is going to go straight down to my ass and the thighs and all the good spots. Not the belly. Like uh, Chris. All right. So, in the early prelims, we got a couple people. Very first fight of the prelims to open up UFC 277. We have Mike Blood Diamond Matea against Orion Kosuke. This fight has been rescheduled. Uh, Blood Diamond is actually quote unquote one of the one of the good friends of Israel Adesanya. Um, he is three and one. His UFC debut, he did get submitted by Jeremiah Wells very early on. Um, but yeah, I mean, he was hyped up just because of his striking and the fact that he trained with Izzy. So um, obviously, his striking's there. It's going to be there. The thing with Jeremiah mm-hmm. Wells is he really took advantage of his, you know, that clinching, the grappling, and he submitted him. I remember I watched that fight. And it kind of sucked for Mike Matea because, you know, it looked like he didn't know what to do once he got caught uh, in that back, you know, when once he gave up his back. So something he has to learn. I mean, you know, being an MMA fighter, you can't just rely solely on your striking. Even Alex Pereira, I think he got um, choked out or something in one of his earlier pro fights. But, I mean, for Mike Matea, his fourth professional MMA fight was in the UFC. So, um, you know, we got to give him the credit. Either way. Uh, that's going to be one to watch. Um, he's still, you know, on some type of radar. I'm not saying he's going to be a contender soon. I'm not saying he's going to be challenger soon, but still trains with Izzy. That's who he is. Mike blood diamond with Um, moving on after we got Michael Morales against Adam. Uh, you get, uh, Michael Morales used to train at the old camp with, uh, Brandon Moreno. He actually fought at UFC 270. Uh, he was actually bumped up, I believe to the opening main card. Because one of the fights fell off and he was going to be the prelim fight of the night. I believe that's what happened. Um, let me double check. But yeah, he is 13-0. and He won uh, his that UFC fight at 270 against Trevin Giles. He actually knocked him out. So that was pretty crazy. He's only 23 years old and he has 13 professional wins. Um, so that's fucking impressive as shit. This guy looks absolutely jacked. Like I said, he used to train with Brandon Moreno in his old cap. Um, so, I mean, who knows? Keep a lookout for him. He's going to, you know, he knocked out Trevin Giles, who is a veteran. He's fought a lot of people, um, you know, at the age of fucking 23. He already has 13 professional fights. So, for being 23, you debuted in the UFC on the fucking main card, and you get a first-round knockout, you know, that immediately puts me or puts you on my radar. So there's Michael Morales. That is a um, one of the prelim fights. Not gonna, you know, it's on the early prelims, but who cares? Ed, what we'll were keep you moving on? Ed, what were you doing at the age of twenty three? I'm right here doing a podcast. There you go. Uh, take a guess at what I was doing at that. I'm um, a. Hey, I I was a champion before that guy. <laughs> 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 I held this belt before him. There you go. Uh, we got. In the, in the normal prelude, we got Drakkar, Klose, uh, Klose, and Rafa Garcia. 
that one might be a banger. These guys got hands. They're just going to throw them out. Um, Drew Dover's <laughs> coming back. Drew Dover, we last time against Terrence McKinney. Fucking chin and steel. Incredible chin, all that shit against Raphael Avi. Fucking literally. Obvious, Dude, um, you fucking, you, sorry that I interrupted, but you talk about, oh, good. you know fucking Giga Chad? You yeah. Talk, you talk about literally, Drew Dober is literally the epitome of who Giga Chad is. Yeah, look at this guy. Look at this. Okay, I'm going to show you guys a picture of the Giga Chad. In meme. the most respectful way possible, he's a fucking Chad. Look at that shit. So there's a meme that goes on. I don't know if you guys have found it. It's like on Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. Where you could like make your fucking jaw, like the jawbone right here at the end, come out like like stupid and then give you a, a very big chin. And they call that being a Giga Chad, just like this dude. I don't even know if it's a real guy. But that's basically what a Giga Chad is. And when you look at Jude Dober, he's literally a fucking Giga Chad. Uh, that's as close as I could get. But look at this motherfucker's jaw. He literally has a jaw of steel. Holy shit. All right, Ed, continue. Yeah, but that's pretty much it for the prelims um, that I have on my radar. So I yeah. guess we can go ahead and kick off UFC 277 with not the Lioness, but Lionheart, Anthony Smith, and Magomed Ankalaev. Gonzo, what's your take on this one? Well, this is definitely... I'm not going to lie. I, I, I saw the... I actually saw the, the odds for this, and I honestly think it's pretty disrespectful to uh, Anthony Smith. Uh, I'm going to double-check real quick yep. with you what the UFC has it as. Plus 380. A plus 380 for Anthony Smith and a negative 475 for Magomed Akalev. Look, I understand Magomed, what he's undefeated. He's definitely on a fucking tear right now. Uh, whatever. Um, oh, no, he actually has one loss to his name, and I think that one loss back versus Paul Craig, he lost via triangle choke. And since then, he's been on a, I think, a eight or nine fight win streak. But look, this is this is the thing. I'm not going to say he's not an impressive fighter because I think he's a great fighter. But uh, I mean, his last three fights have been wins via unanimous decision. And his last fight versus Thiago Santos, I, I think he just put on what you would consider a master class. You know what I mean? Just doing the best he can and whatever. I mean, it was unanimous. There wasn't any any splits or any controversial things like that it was pretty it was obvious who won that fight but when you talk about someone like anthony smith i feel like anthony smith despite where he's at in, in his career again you can argue that maybe he's the, he's the gatekeeper for the light uh heavyweight division maybe not uh 36 and 16 uh he is number six overall on the tapology rankings he is on a three fight win streak and all of his last three fights have been because of a stoppage inside the first round. Um, Devin Clark, triangle choke in the first round. Um, looks like whenever he, he fought Jimmy Crew, there was a doctor stoppage, but you know how those go, whatever. Um, and then he his last fight versus Ryan Spann, rear naked choke inside of the first round. Now, none of those guys, I understand, are come to the anywhere near what Magomed Uncle Live is. But to my defense and what I'm trying to argue is I feel like the odds should be closer. I think I would be okay maybe if it was an Anthony Smith plus 200, crack the 200, but, but, or maybe 190, but definitely not where it's at right now. And especially for Magomed Akalev, like give him a negative 200, 250, and I'll be cool with that. I think it's going to be a lot closer fight. And I think Magomed Akalev is going to get tested because he's going to fight, you know, somebody you know in a higher ranking that still has it quote unquote in them but i also believe this is going to be a terrible fight for anthony smith as well you talk about um coming coming back to reality somebody who's kind of in the tail end of their career does commentating has a family i don't know how much time he's putting in the gym he's definitely not no um fucking islam or uh fucking the other dude that's on a fucking crazy uh hair right now um but I, I don't know. It, it just it just really depends on how much time and effort Anthony Smith put in because definitely uh, Magomed is a dangerous fighter. Magomed on the other side, if he continues to do what he's doing, he should win. So I guess to close it off on my end, Magomed on Goliath, unanimous decision. Uh, 
Let him know, Ed. Yeah, I mean, one thing to point out about Anthony Smith is he's one of the few fighters to, I guess, kind of reverse the John Jones curse. And what I mean by that, I mean, we kind of saw how uh, Alexander Gustafson's career de- kind of downward spiraled after his fight, first fight against uh, John Jones. Even the rematch, he wasn't near what he was the first time. Uh, and then, like, people like Ovin St. Pro, where he was this high-touted guy, you know, very athletic, very, you know, combined with a lot of different tools. Uh, and then he lost, and we saw where his career went. And then we get Anthony Smith. You know, he comes off a loss to John Jones. He ends up beating Alexander Gustafson, and then he gets absolutely bullied by Glover Deshera. And then he loses to Alexander Rocket. So it's like, what next? You know, two straight losses. But since then, like you pointed out, he has gone three or no, three straight stoppages in the first rounds. One thing that I want to point out, what he said in the press conference, he said to Mago, about Mago Ben Ankalaev that Mago Ben Ankalaev has been in many, many MMA fights or MMA bouts, but never in a fight. And he's going to take a fight to him. So, I mean, you can kind of say that. Yes. But when you just compare the level of competition, the level of skill, the level of striking that Mago Ben Ankalaev has faced in his last few fights, as opposed to Anthony Smith, um, you know, it's it's second to none. You know, recently he fought Tiago Santos. Um, Tiago Santos, we already know, you know, he put he put John Jones. He got a split decision loss to John Jones. Uh, he just got a win over Johnny, Johnny Walker. He definitely has power. And then he fought, before that, he also fought Vulcan Ozdemir. Ozdemir, we just saw him beat Paul Craig. But Ozdemir has power too. Nikita Krilov. Krilov just absolutely demolished Alexander Gustafson. Uh, Ian Kudalaba um, beat him twice, both via knockout. So it's like, okay, fine. You can say he's isn't in scraps, I guess, but he's fought scrappers. That's literally who he's fought in his last three fights, as opposed to Anthony Smith. Um, and then also one thing with Anthony, Anthony Smith, we saw his ground game against Glover Teixeira, and Glover just kind of worked him. Uh, and Magomed is one of those Dagestanis who has been working on his striking, who has been showing us that he, you know, can keep up with some kind of striking. Um, But I think it's going to be one of those fights where, you know, Anthony Smith might have a chance if he knows how to counter some things, especially in the ground game. Uh, You know, he's gone to mission. He's wiggled out of things. So that's going to be his best opportunity. But nonetheless, I still think Magomed is going to control the fight, clinch everything, um, keep the striking at bay. He's not going to take risks. He's going to be very technical. So, I'm going to go Magomed by split decision as well. I mean, th- decision, not split decision. Just straight UD, I don't know, split, whatever it is. Alrighty, guys. Well, that'll lead us right into the next fight with Alexand- Alex- Alexandre. I don't know if I'm trying I need to drink. Alexander Pantoja. Yeah, that's how I thought it was. Cannibal. Um, versus Alex Perez. Uh, and I didn't really do too much research on these two fighters. I do know that they're um, both in the flyweight division uh, alongside Brandon Moreno and um, Ty Car of France. And you could even argue, hey, maybe the winner of this fight. I, you know what? Just the way the timeline is, probably not right. But maybe the winner of this fight will end up getting a title fight within um, some time. So, Ed, go off real quick. Let him know. Yeah, I mean, Alex Perez, we've seen him in a title fight already against uh, Devison Figueredo, and it was within the time span where Devison was fighting, like, five fights in, like, four months, whatever the fuck it was. Um, I mean, to his credit, he did beat Juicy Formiga via first-round KO, uh, and Juicy was one of the last people to beat Devison prior to Brandon Moreno, so that's something we haven't seen. Uh, Brandon, I mean, uh, uh, Devison losing to other people. But, I mean... Alex Perez's last fight was back in 2020. He has been inactive ever since. All of his fights have gone, um, or his last three fights in the last, you know, two years, because they were on 2020, they've only gone one round. He either lost or won. Um, so, you know, in terms of ring time, you know, Dominic Cruz says ring rust, ring rust isn't real, but, you know, not being active, not being a spotlight, uh, I think it does make somewhat of a difference. Um, you know, they're, Pretty much identical in terms of record. They both have like 24 wins and like five or six losses. Uh, but on the other scale, we have Alexander Pantoja, uh, who's, you know, 
probably flip. You know, he's been active. He's been fighting. He's been fighting top tier talent. Uh, he's on two fight win streak. He just beat Brandon Roy Vavia submission in the second round. He's fought Askar Askarov, lost to him in a decision loss. Um, Askarov did show, you know, that he was the better fighter, but still, either way, I mean, it, it's Askarov. Like, you know, he's under, you know, one loss now to Kai. Um, and then he's also knocked out Matt Snell. And Matt Snell, we just saw how much of a scrapper he is. He lost to Devison um, by decision as well. And he actually has two wins over the former champion, Brandon Moreno, one of them being in the UFC, the other one being in the regional circuit. So that's pretty crazy. I think he actually choked him out at one point. Um, but I don't know if that was tough. It might have been on tough where he beat him. Either way, Pantoja uh, is on a different scale, um, <clears throat> e even though both fighters have like a similar record. Um, I just think Pantoja, just the fact that he's been active, the fact that he's gone the distance, the fact that he's faced top tier talent, um, as opposed to Alex Perez, I just think that's going to be all the difference. And I'm going to say Alexander Pantoja. Uh, I'm going to go rear naked choke, second round, first round. I'll do first round. Yeah, I'm going to. Um, this one's kind of um, a no brainer, if I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I think uh isn't didn't um Alexander or not Alex didn't isn't Alex Perez fighting out of fucking um the valley as well? Yeah, he did fight he did fight at Tachi a few, a lot of times actually in his early career. I be, I believe he's a valley boy. Um I'm actually gonna fact check this shit real quick. Um uh, Alex Perez. Check out where uh, his roots are from. Because if I remember you right... you he was from Porterville? No, 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 no. That's, that's Joe Shoto, uh, Soto. Shout out to that guy. Um, Let's see. So... Uh, where is his... Yeah. So uh, he was born in 1992. He's the currently age of 30. And he is from Hanford, California. Shout out to Hanford. Um, I have a, a family out there. Um, So... Chad Mendez. Yeah, and Chad Mendes is also, I believe, a Hanford guy. So, look, guys, in all honesty, uh, what Ed and I are here to do, we're not here to take sides or to be biased as hard as, I mean, as much as it is. Uh, I mean, we definitely have some biases to it, and it's very clear. But I feel like when it comes to in more honest fights like this, uh, we're more, we're really not about the hype. We're more about, like, the actual skill level and shit like that. We are originating from the Valley, Fresno, Bakersfield, whatever, 559 five, down to the 661. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're necessarily going to favor with them. We definitely have a lot of uh, pride and we um, appreciate them a lot. But in all honesty, you're going to be missing weight like Alex Perez. If you're going to be inactive, He's literally tried to fight Matt Schnell uh, like fucking four times and they've all been canceled. And then he tried to fight Asker Askarov twice. And I think he just has a like he, he has trouble making weight. And I mean, to be fair, it is 125. But come on, dude, if you're if you're going to consistently miss weight, like either give it up or move up in weight. You know what I mean? Like. That's just my take on it. That doesn't necessarily uh, coincide with the actual fight take. Because when you talk about the fight take, um, Ed is completely right. I, I don't. I believe it was Pantoja, right? The one that that they asked him a question, and he said, "Oh, I'm just chilling up here with my three sons or some shit like that." So he definitely took a fat shot. I don't know if anybody acknowledged it, but he was just up there. I thought this, it was interesting. They had, I think, the whole card out there too. It was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, he was just up there with the shades and his fucking his uh, his beats, and he was just chilling. He didn't give a fuck. And I feel like something like that, he definitely has to, he has a very mysterious feel to him. Like a very, I don't give a fuck type fighting out of ATT and shit like that. Um, and how um, Ed did bring it up. He did fight Brandon Moreno and he beat him. So, I mean, he does have that accolade. He's fought Askar Askarov and he's lost. He fought Davison Figueredo and he's lost. He's beat Matt Schnell. He's beat Manel Cop. He's beat Brandon Royval. This guy's literally beat like all of the quote-unquote big names in, inside of that flyweight division. So I think it's kind of a no-brainer here. I haven't really looked at the odds, and I'm going to take a look at them right now. But, 
Yeah, I think he's going to get it done uh, very early. So I'm going to have to go with um, submission inside the first round. No disrespect to the Valley. Shout out to Hanford. Hold on, let, me, let me get my picks in, guys. Give me a fucking second. Yeah, I got rear naked choke, baby. I'm getting specific with this one. Rear oh, naked pick of the night. Are you willing to throw money on that? Uh, rear naked Drake stakes? Rear naked Drake stakes? There you go. Uh, I'll see what the odds are. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up the odds right now, too. All right, so the official odds for this specific fight, it is... Oh, it's a lot closer. See, like, I don't get it. How the fuck? I'm not going to even talk about it. But positive 140 for Alex Perez and negative 165 for Alexander Pentoja. Ed, what do you think about those odds? Um, I think they're fair. I mean, Pantoja is a pretty decent favorite. So, you know, it, it's nothing crazy, but I think it's fair. Yeah. All right, guys. So now to the more interesting fights and probably the fights that we have a little bit more to say, a little bit more knowledgeable. The Coco main event, we got Derek the Black Beast Lewis versus Sergey Pavlovich. Plavovich. Pavlovich. Plavovich. Yo, who the fuck at Rear Naked Take let me pronounce all these fucking names? You guys are fucking idiots. Your talent recruitment is ass. Um, all right, Ed. Well, you uh, you let him know. Um, I I have a strong feeling. I know who I'm gonna go with in this fight. But if there's any other weird takes that you got, let him know. Yeah, I mean, Black Beast, Derek Lewis. We know what he's gonna bring. We know what he does. He likes to get inside. He likes to pop you. Um, he likes to throw that. Some that is that. Hold up, hold up, hold up. He likes to get inside you and he likes to pop you. What Pause, the fuck does the that homo? mean? Resume. What the fuck that's, does that mean? That's something. That's something that he would say. That could be a quote of his. There you go. That's true. Um, he he in the <laughs> press conference he said some funny shit. Uh, some guy said something to him in English, the reporter, and he fully understood it, but he's like translated in Spanish, <laughs> and then uh the guy translated in Spanish, and then he said uh something puto. Pinche puta or some shit. That shit was hilarious. Uh, I gotta go back but, I mean, and see that. There's Derek Lewis embracing uh, his Houston roots right there. But I mean, yeah, Derek Lewis, he is coming off uh, a loss. Uh, he's one and two in his last three. And he's, uh, you know, I think he's like 0 and 2 in Houston. So that sucks. Uh, the thing about Derek Lewis is like he, he has a peak and we've seen his peak. Like what he does is he fights, you know, the mid top 10, like 10 through 5. And he he can beat them. He definitely could. I mean, look at Chris Dawkins. Chris Dawkins came in. He was like three straight knockouts, you know, two of them being in the first round. He was taking people out. And then he gets to Derek Lewis. Boom. Derek Lewis fucking pieces him up. Fucking hits him with like a jumping knee and then right in the clinch, straight to his face. I don't know if it was a hook or straight. Took his ass out. Out cold, right? Same thing with Curtis Blades. Curtis Blades is taking people out. Um he was over here looking like he was almost unstoppable, and then he goes for a takedown, and then Derek Lewis fucking ends him with an uppercut. Uh, once again, inside. So uh, that's that's kind of what Derek Lewis likes to do. He likes to take people inside. Um, you know, Pavlovich to me, he kind of has like almost the same kind of skill set as Doc is. Doc is a little bit longer. Doc is likes to be outside, but you know, hit his opponent. Um, and that's kind of what Pavlovich does. But Pavlovich fucking can rain haymakers. Uh, he's 17 and one for a reason. His last loss was his debut to Alistair Overeem, one of the best MMA fighters of all time, one of the best pride fighters ever. Um, so all of his fights, I think, have ended in the first round. Um, I think that's the perfect mix for Derek Lewis. That's exactly what he wants. He just wants to get in there, no fight time, just fucking swing, swing for the fences, and then you know someone gets out of there uh, with their wits or not with their wits. So a very interesting fight. You know, I could see why Derek Lewis is an underdog, and that's just because um, we kind of seen what he does, right? We kind of seen how he can get exposed. But think about it. Like I said with Dawkins, he was over here knocking people out. Derek Lewis laid him out flat. I think the same thing could happen with Pavlovich. Um, Derek Lewis is, you know, he's a fighter. He's a banger. He's in there. 
like I said, inside pops people. I think he can do that with Pavlovich. Uh, fuck, someone's gonna get knocked out. I'm just gonna say Derek Lewis by knockout round one. First of all, I just wanna give a uh, a quick acknowledgement to uh Chris. I thought you were about to transition over to the group to the good side, but it still looks like you're uh, a bitch. So, um, fuck you, Chris. You're, uh, tripping balls like always. Yeah, fuck you, Chris. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, so, Ed, Ed, did you say that Derek Lewis is the underdog on this fight? Yes. Slight what underdog. Fuck? Plus 108 or 105. That's, that's, that's What's fucking that? weird. In all honesty, I think that that's weird as fuck. No disrespect to, uh, to Sergey at all, because, I mean, I, I saw his resume right now. He definitely still, uh, you know, he he's not that he's on a big tear, but he definitely has some some wins, and they're all I believe inside the first round. His last win versus uh Shamil, uh, ground and pound round number one. Before that, Maurice Green. Before that, Marcelo uh, Golem. They're all wins inside the first round. But look, Ed, th- this this is like. I have two speculations or like two other things that I feel like need to get discussed because whenever you talk about Derek Lewis, he always wins when you least expect him to. When you think, oh, he's done. Oh, he's not going to win. I feel like he, he, he performs well whenever he's the underdog opposed to whenever he's the favorite. Whenever he's a favorite, he fought. He always, whenever he's a favorite, he always fights these, um, these big name fighters or whatever. Uh, serial God, not on the odds, but like in the fans. Surreal gone, tied to Avasa. When the hype is there, I feel like he breaks down. And I feel like in this fight in particular, he's going to have a mix of both because, as you said, he's 0-2 in, in his hometown in Houston, right? But he's fighting in Dallas this time, so I don't know if that's going to have a, an effect at all. But regardless, he's still fighting in Texas, so I feel like that might have some sort of an influence on him. But I, I, just, I just don't know here, you know what I mean? I, it, it, could, it could really go either way. He might have the Texas influences that are gonna really hurt him, or he's gonna have the, that underdog mentality where he's just gonna go out there and and, um, and bang it out like he always does. Regardless, earlier this year, back I believe in when did they fight in February, right? Uh, I think so. Whenever they fought February, March, um, I fucking I literally saw like uh, something that I never thought I was gonna see in my life, and that being said, and that was a. Uh, Derek Lewis getting knocked out. I never thought I never thought I was gonna ever see that. I thought he was gonna be tied to Avasa. Whatever. His own his losses have been against a formidable. To opponent. be fair, if you run that fight back ten times, it might be five out of ten for yeah. both of them. Uh yeah. Especially their their fighting styles. I mean, surreal gone, master class. You we know he likes to fight smart and technical. Makes sense. Tied to Avasa, that was a complete toss up. They're both fucking dogs. Taito Vasa has a great chin. I, 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 don't, I just don't know, guys. Let's not forget that he also knocked out Curtis Blades, uh, Chris Dawkins. Um, I honestly feel like the UFC has set up Derek Lewis for, for a dub here. He's definitely going to fight a great fight with Sergey. And um, I don't know. It, this is a tough one, but I'm just going to bite down on my tongue. And I'm gonna say Derek Lewis knockout inside the first round. Let's go, boy. Yep. Let's go. D Lewis. All right, Lewis, Ed. You know, look, it might be the people's main event. These yeah. motherfuckers fight yes, every sir. time. Derek Lewis fight. It's most more than likely an exciting fight. Tied to Ivasa. Yep. Chris Dawkins. <laughs> uh, Curtis Blades. So I'm ready for it. I'm ready as fuck like for it too, baby. Yes, sir. Let's go. Houston zone, Derek the Lewis. Um, All righty, guys. So the next fight in the co-main event, we have Brandon Moreno versus Kai Kara France. I think it's very fucking clear who I'm going to go for. Ed, you can go ahead and throw it out there. Let them know. Do what you got to do. Try to prove me wrong or reiterate why I'm right. Yeah, I mean... Tied to Ivasa Kakara France, once again, the co-main event and the main event are going to be full of rematches. 
This one was a fight, I think, back in 2019. It was on, uh, you know, Moreno's come up and also maybe even Kai Care France come up. Um, so, I don't know. Both of these guys competed on the Ultimate Fighter together. Both of these guys lost. They've had weird careers. Brandon Moreno's on a second stint in the UFC, you know, in which he became champion. Kai Care France is on, you know, just a war path where he knocked out Cody Garbrandt, former uh, UFC bats weight champion. Uh, he beat Askar Askarov in one of the most improbable wins, I think. Um, crazy close fight, but still, like, Askarov possessed so many skills um, that I think even surpassed Brandon Moreno's, and he still found a way to beat him in a three-rounder, I think it was. Uh, Could have been a five, but still, um, crazy fight. The first fight, it was wild. I mean, these guys, they both went at it. Uh, Kai Care France had Brandon Moreno in trouble in that first fight. Um, very early on, at least in the first round, he actually knocked him down. But then, you know, rounds two and three, Moreno just figured it out. He had confidence. He had swagger. And when you see Brad and Moreno have confidence, like, it's crazy. Like, he was yelling at him. Um, you know, he was showing his spirit. He was dogging him. He was, um, you know, landing some huge strikes, leaving his nose all bloody, you know, battering him up. But uh, say what you want. Brad and Moreno, when he's in his element, it's it's a spectacle, dude. Seeing that this guy is 125 pounds and he just wants to go in there and just fucking scrap, it's crazy. It's inspiring me. It, ma- it makes you want to just go fight. But Kai Care France is the exact same way. He's just on the opposite spectrum in terms of like charisma. He he contains it. He doesn't show much. Uh, you know, for him, it's just more of his his self belief, his self you know I- affirmation. He tells himself, "I'm going to be the champion. I'm next up. I'm that guy. It's my time." Um, and that's what he always reiterates. Uh, so it's a little bit different than Moreno. You know, Moreno's kind of just like he, he's that charisma. He shows he has flair, but he does have swagger. And they're both incredible fighters. Um, I think you know, Kai Care France possesses a lot of pop. You know, Moreno obviously does have some power in that. You know, one twenty five, um, probably a little bit better ground game. But I mean, Kai Care, we saw him stuff some takedowns against Askar Askarov, which is you know, one of the most elite 125ers in terms of wrestling. It's just going to be crazy. Uh, we've seen him put on a show that I don't think it's going to go like the first fight at all. I'm excited this is going to be a fight rounder. I think this is going to be a banger. I'm glad it's going to be for the interim champion. Whatever the fucking figurator wants to do is whatever the fuck he wants to do. This one's going to show, you know, true top talent. I think it might even be fight of the night, um, you know, if the main event doesn't get it. I don't know. I'm going to I'm gonna take Kai Kara France right here. By decision, nice pick. Um, I, I I honestly thought you're gonna you're gonna choose a uh, Brandon Moreno, but it's okay. I, I I like I like the doubters and shit. All right, so I don't even know where to start with this fucking pick. Should I should I fucking ride Brandon Moreno's nutsack or should I completely despise Kai Kara France and explain to you guys why I don't feel like he's gonna win? Let, let's just start off with the negatives because I don't really like talking a whole lot of shit unless I mean it. Um, not that I don't mean this shit, but it's, I feel like it's, it's a little much. So when you think about Kai Kara France, first of all, let, let, me, let me remind everybody what his nickname is. Ed, what is his nickname? Kiwi. Thought it was Don't Blink. Oh, don't, No Blink. Whatever. He's or Don't a, Blink, yeah. yeah. Kai Don't Blink. I don't know. He always says that he's always he has a weird little phrase that he says, like, don't blink some shit like that because he's so fast and he's going to knock somebody out. But let me remind you guys, out of all the fights he's had in the UFC, he's only finished a fighter twice. That being uh, Rogero Von Torin in the first round at UFC uh, 259 and Cody Garbrandt at 269. And let me remind you guys who he knocked out at 269 and knocked out Cordy Garbrandt, which he's normally a uh, bantamweight. And he decided for whatever fucking reason to come down to 125 and fight Kai Kara France. And then he knocks him out. I'm not surprised. There's a reason we call him Cody No Chin Garbrandt. All due respect to Cody, you'll fuck me up any day. You too, Kai Kara France, but still. I, I like I, I get the marketing for the UFC and wanting to hype this fight up, but I feel like the way that they're kind of going about it is that they make him seem like he's had a shit ton of finishes in his past. Um 
and the only really video they have to display that is Cody Garbrandt. Again, he was fighting at a much lighter weight. We know that. We know what that does to people's chin. And it's I pretty much will go as far as to say that scientifically proven that if you cut that much weight, you're probably going to lose your chin. So any, any hits that you'll take, you're probably going to go down. Whatever. Um, and then, to be fair, like, Ed, we and you had a discussion about the, the Asker Askarov fight. And although it was a unanimous decision for Kai Kaikara France, I think you and I came to an agreement that it was 2-1 Asker Askarov. And a lot of people believe he was robbed. i am be honest, though, I never went back to watch the fight myself to really analytically look at it. But initially, I thought Asker Askarov won. And even even throwing that out there kind of makes me like think like oh shit you know like is he really a, a, like all about it? He's good. He's he's a great fighter, but is he at the top tier caliber of Brandon Moreno? That being said, let me transition over to Brandon Moreno and what he has to offer. Brandon Moreno has literally fought the best flyweight since the end of two thousand and nineteen. Back in or 2020, my bad. And it all started in at two at UFC 255 when uh Figueredo was defending his title versus um Perez, Alex Perez. Figueredo ended up beating him. Then uh Brandon Royval went ahead and fought Brandon Moreno. Brandon Moreno uh beat him. He fucking uh I think he broke his arm or something crazy happened, but he he ended up beating him. That was November of 2020. Fast forward literally a month later. None of these guys go back to their hometown. They both stay in Vegas. And they take fights on short notice. And they literally put on one of the best fights the UFC has has to offer. If you haven't seen the first fight between Brandon Moreno and Davidson Figueredo, I would highly encourage to go watch it. And remember, it was a quick turnaround. None of them had any time to train for each other. And they literally had it as a majority draw. Brandon Moreno had the confidence. Davidson Figueredo probably felt a little assaulted and thought, who the fuck is this guy? Like, let me fuck him up. I'll be fine. And they ended up being in a, a majority draw. So then they go ahead and rebook the fight for June. UFC 263, Adesanya versus Vittori, number two. I was at a fucking 15, partying. Not really. I was watching the fights. And then the co-main event happens. Davidson Figueredo and Brandon Moreno for the rematch of the for the title. Guess what happens? Davidson Figueredo has a shitty ass weight cut. Whatever. Moreno uh, gets a rear naked choke on him. Shout out to Moreno for doing that. You already know we rock with the rear naked chokes over here. He ends up being the champion. They make a fucking third fight. Which Ed and I were able to go and attend live. Davidson Figueredo versus Brandon Moreno. Number three. Brandon Moreno being the champ at Anaheim, UFC 270. I was there. Ed was there. I was hyped. Brandon Moreno sent my flag. That shit was dope as fuck. And yet another fight that is probably very controversial. Davidson Figueredo thought he won. Brandon Moreno thought he won. I thought Davidson Figueredo won, if I'm going to be quite honest. So I think they chose the right fighter. It is what it is. Sometimes in life we take those L's. But in literally what I just fucking said, that was in the span of like two years. He's literally fought the best for the for fucking two years. And you're telling me that Kai Kara France has enough, what it has what it takes to beat him? Look, I might be looking, I might overlook Kai Kara France, whatever, but it's just hard for me to believe that Kai Kara France will first and foremost beat him, but let alone finish him. And he's saying that he wants to finish him. I don't know. That's a that's a very tough for me. Regardless, I'm going to have to go with uh, Brandon Moreno. I think he's going to get the finish in round three. So, I mean, you're talking about science. You're talking about facts. Fine. Uh, round four. Uh, I'm not going to – I mean, I'm not going to argue with the fact that Moreno has fought the best 125 on the planet three straight times. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not going to argue on the fact that Moreno is, you know – fighting the best he's ever fought in his entire life. <clears throat> but from your first segment where you were, you know, I don't know what you were trying to do with Kai Kara France and talk about his power and talk about his finishes. Um, and you're talking about science. 
Well, I mean, let me give you the facts. In his career, Brandon Moreno only has three knockouts. In Kai Karen Francis' career, he has 11 knockouts. Um, so if you're talking about power and knocking people out, that's 11 finishes. That's why he gets the, the nickname don't, don't Blink. Whereas Brandon Moreno, his nickname is the Assassin Baby, but he has three knockouts. Fine. I'm not going to discredit that. But still, you can't discredit No Blink. Brandon Moreno only has one finish in the UFC. And that's still less than Kai Kara Francis' two finishes in the UFC. And then all in all, Kai Kara Francis still has more first-round finishes. So, like I said, I'm not going to argue with the fact that Moreno's, you know, the guy right now on the streak, fighting the best. Um, but you can't take away what Kai Kara Francis has done in his career, and not only in his career, but recently too. Rogelio Bontorin, great 125er, knocked him out cold. Cody Garbrandt, one of the best, you know, 135ers, knocked him out cold. Askar Askar, regardless of what we think, he beat him, right? He beat him. You can go back to 2019, Kai Kerr France versus Brandon Moreno won. Regardless of what we think, Brandon Moreno beat Kai, right? So whatever argument you make, he won. Um, and Askar Askar, I don't think there's any argument that he is an elite level fighter. And he has all the tools. Um so I just wanted to throw that out there for you. Yeah. Well, I, I see your point. It just it, it, it just really boils down to what, I guess, quote unquote, the statement or what you're trying to prove is. Because if you're trying to prove that there's power there, I, I don't think my argument was really tiered towards if he's going to knock him out. Because I don't think he will. In all honesty, I, I feel like when whenever you think of someone like Brandon Moreno, he, he definitely has... Despite his size, he definitely has a lot of chin. Uh, Kai Kara France as well. And regardless, the power is kind of diminished at that. I mean, and to be fair, uh, those other finishes that Kai Kara France has had weren't in the UFC. And I'll give him the respect he deserves for knocking out um, uh, that Rogelio guy in the UFC. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll give him that one for sure. Uh, Cody Garbrandt, uh, that one's a hit or miss for me just because of the uh, how diminished. That's still more than Moreno, though. But that's not the argument, though. Like, like what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say, or the initial argument is who's gonna win. You know, not who's a better fighter, who has better, better resume or whatever. I mean, well, even yeah, the better resume. I feel like fighting the champion or fighting for the title three consecutive times in a row speaks louder than having two finishes in, in the UFC. But that's, that's just me. That's nothing. That's that's literally the opposite of what I said. When I first started saying what I said, I literally said, I'm not going to disagree with Brandon Moreno fighting the best of the best. I'm not disagreeing with what he's done in his career and that he's fighting the best. I'm just disagreeing with your first segment where you said, you know, it's it's kind of um, uh, overrating for, for Kai Kerr to be called Don't Blink, you know, for only having two finishes in the UFC. That's what I was disagreeing with. That's it. I, I agree with everything else. Yeah, and and, Moreno's and, on fire. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm I, just saying. I still think Kara has statement. pot. And remember, remember by your decision, your by your definition of chin. What is, what is what is your definition of chin? Getting knocked down or or staying up after you get hit? Because we see Moreno get knocked down a lot. Not saying Kai Kara France hasn't either, but I'm just saying it's possible. Well, yeah. I mean, anything's possible in the UFC. Uh, I'm not gonna say nothing's possible in the UFC, but. He was I don't know. Kevin no, Garnett. Yeah, you're you're I mean, you're right. I mean, he he can knock him out. Do I think it's going to happen? Probably not. And you know, it, I mean, everyone, I got it. I got it by decision too. <laughs> everyone thinks that Israel Adesanya would get knocked out by Paulo Costa, Yoel Romero, fucking Jared Cannon, and you know, all these people, but it's it really comes down and it boils down to the skill. Um but I mean, e even to uh take a few steps back, I feel like Regardless, this fight, I am a little nervous. You know what I mean? Because to Kai's defense, he has been on a on a pretty decent fight streak, and he has a pretty good camp on his on his side. All the Aussie boys, we got um New Zealand's owned quote unquote New Zealand, um Israel Asanya, and then you have Alexander Volkanovski. That's a great fucking team. Eugene's doing some crazy shit over there. Um, respects to him. Now, where I start getting nervous is the training camp because this is 
Brandon Moreno first time with um uh what what what's the Fury. guy's name? James Krause. Yeah. So it is his first time fighting under him, and I feel like that within itself is probably my biggest fear. If if uh he was fighting or kind of stick to the to the same rule book, I feel like he would be good. But that within itself kind of makes me nervous. Regardless, Ed, I mean, I I, think I still think the- he, I still think Brandon's gonna win. You make some great arguments, I'll give you that. But I I I still think Brandon Moreno's gonna win. You shut me up at some, mean, at some of my I, shit. I like, it is what it is. I like both <laughs> fighters. Personally, I really like both fighters. I watch the countdown. I watch both their stories. Like, to me, it's like, I like both of them. I do. And I like the fact that James Krause trains Brad and Moreno. And I like his reasoning for leaving the camp. He said, oh, I know everybody. I know the looks. I know the fighters. I'm used to it. I needed something new. And I like that. Um, and, I mean, James Krause, I think he coaches, like, 10-plus UFC fighters. Dana goes to James Krause for, for, you know, does this guy have the talent? You know, should we bring him on? Like, Dana goes to Krause. So Krause knows how to coach. Um, it is different because it's probably a lot bigger gym than Moreno's used to. But I don't know. Maybe Moreno was at a big-ass gym, too, and TJ. Because, I mean, he probably was, if anything, or as big. So that might not even be the thing. Um, I think Moreno might have even gotten better. Um, but... I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm just excited because this is gonna be a fucking scrap, and I'll just leave it at that. It's gonna be a fucking yeah, scrap, and I'm yeah. I'm ready to watch it. Yeah, I I definitely believe this is gonna be a good fight as well. Um, and I'm a, I'm not gonna lie, Ed, I I am very nervous for this fight. Um, um, like I I guess like me and sh- trying to shoot my promo to diminish the fuck out of Kai Car France, whatever, and really hype up Moreno, whatever. But when it comes down to Ground Zero, I am honestly nervous for this fight. I can't see Kai Kyra France pulling this one off on a very, very close decision. Need a shot. Take your shot. Take your, your yeah, proper. I, uh, we're not at the end, buddy. We're almost there. Um, Shout out to 49 Danny for popping by again. So I did uh, I, I did say that Brandon Moreno was going to knock him out in, in, the, in the fourth round. I don't know. After these conversations, you're making me doubt myself. I would, I would definitely see uh, maybe a unanimous decision for Brandon Breno or even a split. But I honestly believe this is going to be fight of the night. It could very well even be performance of the night. You know what I mean? Something crazy, something spectacular might happen here. Fucking Brandon Breno might get knocked out. Breno might finish Kai Kara France. Who fucking knows? That's the beauty about UFC, and this is why I continue to watch the sport. But, Ed, when was the last time we took we had a bet. We are far due for a fucking bet. I'm tired of hearing the same old shit that I've took like 80 bucks or you took 80 bucks of mine. Let's 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 raise up the stakes. Shout out to Drake and uh put a, a low dollar bet on this. Yeah, I already got a pretty high amount wagered. Um what do you want to do? Let's do 10, 10 bucks straight. Uh or, ten- is, or you want to do a shot? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was like, I was like, loser buys a. Or no, this no, no, no. is really close. Yeah, loser, gonna, loser, this, this would be a close ass fight. Yeah, loser, loser takes a shot. So, all right, and they have to at pay B-dubs. for it too. Yeah, at B Dubs. B- all right, all right, all right. Someone clip that shit. It's about to go down. B Dubs. We will get into that by the end of the, the um. We'll, the stream. we'll post that shot too. Yes, of sir. Loser. Um, alrighty, guys. Main event time, baby. Yeah, main event time. Let me get out of champ, all this champs. crap. Champ champs. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Juliana Pena versus Amanda Nunez. The rematch of the fucking century. Holy Linus. shit. I don't even know where to start Linus off with this Vixen. one. Ed, do you want to start this or you just want want to let me go? I feel like I've been I've been starting. So I'm going to give you an opportunity. All right. <clears throat> so where where do I start with this one? Ed, I, I know you've been keeping up with both of these fighters even more. And to me, all of that shit is noise. I feel like the tough season was a lot of noise. Um, Juliana Pena can drop some amazing fucking promos, whatever. Reverse back to UFC 269. I honestly did think Amanda Nunes was going to win. I'm pretty sure everybody thought that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Easy. For sure. I was no, giving, there, there was, there was okay, no doubt. Uh, Juliana shit for talking shit. But... But this is one of those moments where Juliana Pena um, was hungry. 
And Amanda Nunez had a John Jones moment where I don't feel like she was motivated. If you go back and watch that first John round, John Jones could win when he's not motivated. Yeah, then that's well, that's, that's what makes him. That's what makes him the MMA goat. Um, Amanda Nunez. Go rewatch that first round. Amanda Nunez pieced up Juliana Pena. The only, the only real. Um, oh yeah, threat. she had her fucking scared. Yeah. Well, the only threat that I saw in that first round was at the very end, whenever they both went to the ground and Juliana Pena was uh, trying to lock into Kimura. And Amanda Nunez was kind of surprised, and she looked over at her at her team and trying to act like she was like kind of like, you know, help me out here. So they just told her stay put. You don't have too much time. Whatever. It the the first round ends a clear ten nine for for Amanda Nunez. By that point, Juliana Pena's face was already getting fucked up. Amanda Nunez's face wasn't getting that that messed up. <clears throat> now starts oh shit, random random. Now you start um at round. Number two, and both of these females go to fucking war. So much so that Amanda Nunez did not really know how to take it. Right? She was like, holy fuck, like the fight's finally getting brought to me. I didn't expect this. I thought I would uh, pretty much molly whop the shit out of her. Whatever. And I get it. As human beings, when we're constantly doing something repetitive, 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 we get bored and we lose motivation. On the other hand, you have somebody else like Juliana Pena with, again, normal human instincts. You're almost there. One more step. One more step. And now you're there. You're going to give it your fucking all. And I honestly think that's what happened here. Juliana Pena was more hungry than Amanda Nunez. And Amanda Nunez completely overlooked Juliana Pena and fucking lost. My biggest point here is whenever you see both of the female fighters face to face at the end of the fight. Um, Juliana Pena looked very much more um, damaged than than Amanda Nunez. Uh, I'm trying to find a picture of whenever they they crowned Juliana Pena with a bell. I can't seem to find. Oh yes, yes, yes. Right. So let me show you guys this picture real quick. And this is my biggest theme. Is that if you see Juliana Pena, she looks her both of her eyes look all swollen. She does not look like that. She um definitely has a lot more cheekbones to show off than that. So she looks pretty fucked up. Opposed to Amanda Nunez, she just looks like she's in a state of shock. She didn't know what the fuck happened. She looks pretty clean to me. And again, if you go back to the fight and if you zoom in on that rear naked choke that allegedly is what stopped the first fight. It doesn't even look like it's locked in all the way. I just feel like uh, Amanda Nunez was just overwhelmed. Again, she overlooked her, and she just she just like quit. Like, today's not my night. Maybe it was an off night, whatever. She'll take her L and move on from there. Whatever. Now, moving forward, I definitely believe Amanda Nunez is a little bit more humbled. She realizes, like, holy fuck, I need to be on my fucking A game this time around. I can't fuck around. Yada, yada, yada. Which is why I... Pretty much, I'm going to go for Amanda Nunez again on this one. Despite what the odds say, I don't give a fuck what the odds say. I know it's very um, towards Amanda Nunez. But just based on what I said, I I honestly believe Amanda Nunez had an off night. She looked great in that first round. Just fucked up that last one. Didn't even look that damaged. And I think just like panic uh, started fighting and whatever. I'm going to have to go with Amanda Nunez again. And I think we'll see a finish at least in round three. That's valid. That's very valid. Um, is that it? Yeah, that's all I got. Your turn, bud. Bud, bud, bud. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> this is a little clip of uh, December 11th. Oh, yeah, show him. That was uh, right after the fight. I didn't even have my phone. I had no idea where my phone was uh, when this fight was going on. Because, like I said, I was... Literally losing my fucking mind. Like, I was yelling so much. I thought I was going to fucking pass out. Like, so much energy, so much adrenaline being radiated from that crowd. Uh, Vegas was fucking hyped. And like I said, it wasn't maybe because Pena had so many fans. It was just more so that they were shocked. People were genuinely shocked. A lot of people lost money. A lot of people made money. Um, You know, 
Pena probably made millionaires. You know, Pena made people, she got people to bag. Um, crazy. I mean, when you go down the road of Juliana Pena, you know, she's beaten very, very good fighters, very good strikers. A lot of people, Kat Zinganu, you know, Nunez can even beat Kat Zinganu. Um, she beat uh, Jer- Jermaine Durandamy. Jermaine Durandamy is like one of the best kickboxers or strikers uh, in that division, uh, in women's of all time. Like, she is one of the best strikers. Um, I'll be back quick intermission. She- Sorry. Continue. Yeah, fuck Gonzo. Um, but like I was saying, she's being like so many people. And just, you know, when you take a look at Amanda's past, after beating Ronda Rousey, you know, she decimated her and then she just made a mockery of Holly Holm. And, you know, in the in the interview or the press conference where um, Juliana Pena said, oh, all the real fighters are at 135, I don't care about that 145 belt, whatever. Uh, fine. I mean, that might be true now, but think about it. Amanda Nunez was consistently defending both belts. And they said it before in promos, like, nobody else has done that. Yes, we've seen double champs before. Um, Daniel Cormier, Henry Zehudo, uh, but, you know, Conor McGregor. But have we ever seen them defend them both? Well, as soon as Conor McGregor won the 155 belt, he never even fought 145 again. Uh, as soon as we saw Daniel Cormier win the heavyweight belt, he literally said it. I cannot make 205 anymore. Whenever we saw Henry Zehudo win the 135 belt, I don't even think he went back to defend the 125 belt. But Amanda consistently defended that 145, that 35 against Valentina Shevchenko, you know, Megan Anderson in the 45 division. She is undisputedly the greatest fighter of all time. But a lot of people, even me, overlooked. You know, we were talking about maybe Amanda fighting Kayla Harrison from fucking PFL, um, American Top Team, the connection there. We were talking about that fight. Um, Keep in mind, we saw Amanda get choked out, yes, but she has made her living off striking. But remember... She has that jujitsu in the back. She has that strength. A lot of it was displayed against Valentina Shevchenko. Um, but, I mean, we kind of saw her, how she might, the weight advantage might be a little bit of a difference. Either way. But, yeah, like Gonzo was saying, in that fight, when you saw them both walked out, they were fucking locked in. They were wired. Pena has been waiting for her shot since 2016. There's that clip of her where she's like, yeah, fine, Amanda's the champ, but that's my belt. I want that next. I want that fight. She didn't get it until 2022. Dana didn't take her fucking serious, right? Nobody took her serious. Nobody even took her serious when she had that fight. She believed it, you know? She believed in herself. And it's pretty fucking inspiring. Like, you know, a lot of people said, even Dana said, like, get rid of Rick Little, your fucking coach. Like, he doesn't know shit, right? Um, and she's like, nah, I'm going to stay with him. And look where she is. Um, that countdown promo where they were showing, you know, that first round. Uh, you know, I mean, I can say Amanda maybe looked just a little different when you go back and you look at it even from a walkout, but that's it, all excuses, right? Because in that first round, she fucking knocked her down. Uh, Pena had her hand up. She looked fucking frightened, and I was like, holy shit, she's going to fucking bully her. Um, but then that promo shot, dude, where, where they were showing it, and it was the start of the second, and they were in their fucking corners, and the music was like slowly ramping up, slowly building up. And you're just like, holy shit, because it, it made me reminisce of what happened. I was like, fuck, like, they did such a good job in that countdown, by the way. Um, you know, they're stepping it up. They probably got some new people down there working on that shit. But anyways, she came in the second round with, the, you know, that same mindset. She's like, I don't give a fuck. I got knocked down. I'm going to take the fight to her. That jab, that jab, that jab. There's memes of her just catching her with that jab. And I think the fact that Amanda was just relying on her fist. She fell in love with him, right? That's what got her here. It's fine. But she literally relied on that, on her power to knock out Pena. She loaded up. She was just throwing haymakers. She was just trying to swing, whereas Pena was throwing that jab in and out. And she was eating punches. Don't get me wrong. She was eating fucking punches. Like, like Gonza said, her face was fucking battered. And she was just backing up. Back, You know, she backed up, boom, right back in there. Backed up, right back in there. She literally... um just left it all out and unfortunately for her it was kind of a panic moment and we saw and i think you're right you know when she tapped and the choke wasn't locked in she was the one who initiated the takedown and she got stuff um i think she wanted a way out the moment was too big you know it, it, it hit her like fuck you know you're the best until you're not and that day she wasn't um it but now like looking back at that 
She's the champion for a reason. We call her the greatest for a reason. She's not going to come out here and just, like, wash it out, right? It wasn't like Rousey where Rousey just got fucking obliterated and then comes back and gets obliterated again. Like, that's not what's going to happen. It's going to be a fucking scrap. We've seen Amanda go the distance with some of the best. Um, I think she can do it again. You know, I think Peya can bring the fight to her again, but I just think Amanda just got to be a little bit more composed. Um, you know, fight the jab, get away from the jab, give a jab of her own, get some leg kicks going. Um, you know, it might be some some scrambling down there. We'll see. She's definitely not just going to bully her. Um, but damn, I'm excited for this one. It, you know, what are the odds? They're going to be a lot fucking closer, right? It's got to be. Uh, yeah, they are closer. Because, okay. I mean, fucking Pena was like plus like 10,000. Even yeah, now she's still in her dog. And that uh, probably pisses her off. Plus 230. And that's, that's, pretty, yeah, that's so, fair. I, think that's I mean, fair. I said whatever the fuck I had to say, I guess. Um, but by the end of it, my pick, I'm going to go Amanda Nunez by decision. I think she learns from her first fight. <laughs> this is why she's the best fighter. And she's going to prove it again. Uh, and then Juliana Pena, you know, she, she'll come back stronger than ever. We'll see what happens, but you know, just to see these two women put on this kind of fight headline, fucking uh, American Airlines Arena is gonna be crazy or center, whatever it is. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to Amanda by decision. Nice, good shit, Ed. You, you and I. Oh wait, what the fuck? I... You and I finally. Like Comain's um... gonna be for the belt. Yeah, That's what it the, looks like for the interim. Meanwhile, your boy is off. Uh, let me show him real quick. Uh, Ed's boy is. No, I'm Ed. saying it's gonna be for our belt. Oh, that's right. Anyways, that's Ed right there to, uh, with the uh, Davidson Figueroa. Shout out to him. But yes, which is good. I like that because then that kind of gives us a relief fight, and it's not so much that this is like an Israel Adesanya fight. Like this is gonna be a, a fucking banger. Um, but yeah, guys. Uh, really quick, I just wanted to uh, recap our. That is not it. Get the picks in, boy. Yeah, I completely. All right, guys. Just real quick to recap. Ed is going with um, Uncle Laev. So am I. Ed and I both got Pantoja. Uh, Ed and I both have Derek Lewis. The only differentiation here is I have Moreno. Ed has Kaikara France. Kiwi, and then, baby. And then for Kiwis. the then for the main event, we both have Amanda Nunez. So yeah, guys, those are our picks. What do you guys I think? Miss. What do you guys think? Let us know in the fucking comments and make sure to tour. make sure to follow us on all platforms. You see them right there. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Spotify. I got a shot real quick for the boys that are asking That's for me right. to take a shot. Um I got it right here, guys. So cheers to everybody. Cheers to uh the boy Hasbula. Fuck Chris. Uh, shout out to all of our followers. Rear Naked Takes. That's how we get down. Ah. Cheers. That was proper right there. That's empty fuck. beer. UFC 277, guys. It's going to go down. Ed, do you have anything else to say? Let's get it. Watch this <laughs> card, guys. I'm hyped for it. Beat him. I'm hyped as fuck. We're going to shut that shit down again, oh. like always. Yeah, so so let me let me talk about that, guys. If you guys want to do a meet and greet with us, we will be at B Dubs in Visalia, California. Let me repeat, Visalia, California, at Mooney Boulevard. Make sure we'll to show up. We'll be signing some shoes. We'll be signing shoes. We'll be signing everything. Uh, make sure uh, make sure to buy us some drinks. We're not gonna buy you shit. Uh, just make sure to get there early because there will be a long line and security clearance. Uh, if you want to get in the VIP area with us. Make sure to go to Ticketmaster.com and look for the event. I think forward ticket, slash RNT. RNT. I think um right now the resale value is about a thousand dollars a ticket. Um yeah, there's nothing much we can do, guys. Other than Be that, yours. yes, sir. Other than that, make sure to tune the fuck in. UFC 277. I'm Gonzo. That's the boy at over there. Until then. We will see you guys in the post show of UFC 277. Everyone have a great night and be safe.